Hello developers. What if scrolling wasn't just about moving down a page, but about telling a story, frame by frame? In this video, we're building a beautiful scroll-triggered country showcase layout. It reveals content smoothly as you scroll and fades images behind the scenes in perfect sync. The technology behind it is minimal and clean. We're only using semantic HTML, modern CSS clip path animations, and the GSAP scroll trigger library. Let's decode how it all works and how you can build it from scratch. Let's begin with the foundation of our scroll animation, the HTML. This is the structure that defines how all the content will appear on screen and how it will interact with our CSS and JavaScript. Body section is the part of the page that holds all visible content. We open the body tag. The first element inside the body is a div with class set to section. This div is used to create vertical spacing before our scroll animation starts. It helps us give breathing room at the top of the layout. Next, we write a div with class set to scroll underscore wrap. This is the main wrapper that holds both our image triggers and sticky content. Inside the scroll wrapper, we create two sections side by side. The first section is for background images. We open a new div. This has no class, but it contains multiple divs with the class scroll underscore trigger. Each of these scroll trigger divs holds one background image. We write div with role set to list item and class set to scroll underscore trigger. The role attribute set to list item indicates that this is one item in a larger group or list. This improves accessibility and gives structure to screen readers. Inside this scroll trigger, we place an image tag. The image source is a URL pointing to an image on pexels.com. We also write loading equals lazy. This tells the browser to wait until the image is about to scroll into view before downloading it, improving performance. The alt attribute is left empty, which we should ideally replace with descriptive text for accessibility. And the image has the class scroll underscore background. This class is used in our CSS to style and animate the background image. We repeat this scroll trigger block five times, each with a different image URL. So we have five scroll triggers total, each representing one country's background image. Now we move to the second section, the sticky content track. We write a div with class set to scroll underscore track. This div will be positioned absolutely to overlay the full screen area. Inside this track, we place a sticky container. We write a div with roll set to list and class set to scroll underscore sticky. The roll set to list identifies this container as a structured list of items. This is important for screen readers and structured navigation. Inside this sticky container, we place five scroll items, each representing a country. We write a div with roll set to list item and class set to scroll underscore item. This is one full screen section that will animate in and out as we scroll. Inside this scroll item, we first add a heading. We write a heading level one tag with class scroll underscore title. The content inside this heading is the title of the country's feature. Below the heading, we insert another image tag. This image also uses loading equals lazy. It displays a different pexels image related to the country's culture. The image has the class scroll underscore IMG, which we'll use in CSS to make it circular and responsive. We repeat this entire scroll item five times, each with a unique heading and image related to a different country. Now that both columns are complete, the left for images and the right for sticky content, we add another div with class set to section. This acts as extra spacing at the bottom of the layout so the last scroll item can fully appear before the page ends. Finally, we add our JavaScript files. We start with a script tag that loads the GSAP core library from a content delivery network. Then we load the scroll trigger plugin, which adds scroll-based animation support to GSAP. And last, we write a script tag that links to our custom JavaScript file, main.js. This file will control all the animations and scroll behavior we'll cover later. And that's the full HTML structure. We've built a dual column layout using semantic roles, lazy loaded images, and flexible containers, all ready for animation. Let's move on. Let's quickly break down the CSS that styles and positions our scroll animation layout. We start with the universal selector using asterisk. 
Here we apply box sizing set to border box to keep all elements size consistently. In the body, we define white text on a black background, use a clean sans serif font and set a standard base font size and line height. The H1 selector limits the width of titles to 53% and sets a large font size for impact. Tight letter spacing gives it a compact, bold appearance. Paragraphs and links are reset for clean formatting. Links inherit the current text color and remove the underline for a cleaner design. The image tag is styled to be fully responsive and uses object fit cover, so all images stay nicely cropped inside their containers. Now for the layout. The section class adds vertical spacing. Each one takes up half the viewport height. Container is defined with max width and padding for general use, though not directly used here. The scroll wrap is our main wrapper and is positioned relative to contain absolutely positioned elements inside it. Each scroll trigger takes up full viewport height and hides overflow, preparing it for animation. The scroll track is layered above the scroll triggers using absolute positioning stretch to all edges. Inside it, scroll sticky uses position sticky with top zero, so it stays fixed during scrolling. Each scroll item is a flex container that places the heading and image side by side. It's also positioned absolutely so all items stack in the same place, enabling clip path transitions. Scroll image is made circular using border radius 50% and maintains aspect ratio with a one by one ratio. Overflow hidden keeps the image neatly inside the circle. Scroll background fills its container and uses slight opacity for a soft visual effect. Now for the responsive styles. Below 991 pixels, container padding is reduced. Below 767 pixels, scroll item switches to column layout. Items are centered, spacing is adjusted, and font sizes become responsive using viewport width units. Scroll image gets a smaller max width, and scroll title adapts to smaller screens with flexible sizing. And finally, for very small screens under 479 pixels, padding is reduced further, and headings scale up slightly for better visibility. That's all for the CSS. We've set up sticky layout responsive structure and circular image styling, all optimized for scroll animation. Now let's move into the JavaScript and unlock the real animation logic using GSAP and scroll trigger. Now we've arrived at the most important part of this scroll animation, the JavaScript. We begin with a document query. We write document.query selector all targeting scroll wrap. This means we're selecting every element on the page that has the class scroll wrap. Even though we only have one scroll wrap in our layout, this approach makes our code reusable if more wrappers are added later. We use the for each method to loop through every scroll wrap. We write wrap.querySelector all targeting scroll trigger. This gives us a list of all the image sections that act as triggers. Then we do the same, wrap.querySelector all targeting scroll item. This gives us all the sticky content blocks that animate in and out. Now we loop through every scroll trigger using for each. We take both the trigger and its index number. This index will help us match the correct trigger with the correct scroll item later. Inside the loop, we define two constants. First, background, which selects the image inside the current scroll trigger. Second, item, which refers to the matching scroll item using the same index. Now we begin our animation logic. We start by checking if this is the first scroll item. We write, if index is equal to zero, this is the opening animation. We want the first scroll item to be visible at the start, then fade out as the user scrolls down. We create a gsap timeline. We write gsap.timeline and pass in a scroll trigger object. Inside scroll trigger, we set the trigger to the current scroll trigger element. This defines the area that will activate the animation we set start to top top. This means the animation begins when the top of the trigger reaches the top of the viewport. We set end to bottom top. This means the animation ends when the bottom of the trigger reaches the top of the viewport. We set scrub to true. This links the animation's progress directly to the scroll position, giving us that smooth frame by frame reveal. We also define defaults with ease set to none. This removes any easing so the animation progresses linearly. Now we define the clip path animation. We use from two starting and ending clip path values. 
we start with a full rectangle, all four corners visible. Then animate to a shape where the bottom edge is collapsed, hiding the entire section. This creates a wipeout effect as the user scrolls. Now we check for the last scroll item. We write else if and check if index is equal to the last item. This is the ending animation. We want the last scroll item to appear from a hidden state. We create another GSAP timeline with the same scroll trigger setup. This time, start is set to top bottom and end to bottom bottom. This means the animation begins when the top of the trigger hits the bottom of the viewport and ends when the bottom of the trigger hits the bottom of the viewport. Again, scrub is true and ease is none. For the animation, we start with a flat shape along the bottom, then animate into a full rectangle, revealing the entire scroll item as the user scrolls down. Now for the middle items, everything that is not the first or last. We use a third else condition. Here again, we create a GSAP timeline. Start is set to top bottom, end is set to bottom top. This means the animation begins when the trigger enters the viewport from the bottom and ends when it exits at the top. We use from to four clip path animation. The scroll item starts completely hidden, the bottom edge collapsed. It animates to a full rectangle, revealing the section. Then we add another animation using the to method. This collapses the top edge, hiding the scroll item again before the next one appears. This gives a clean entrance and exit effect. Now outside of the condition blocks, we create a second timeline called TL2. This controls the background image movement. We write gsap.timeline and set scroll trigger to the same trigger. Start is top top and end is bottom top, just like the first condition. Scrub is true and ease is none. We then animate the background image using Y% set to 50. This means the background image will move upward as a user scrolls, creating a smooth parallax effect. This subtle movement adds depth and keeps the layout visually dynamic. And that's the complete JavaScript logic. We loop through each section, use scroll trigger to define scroll-based animation ranges, animate clip paths to reveal or hide content, and shift background images for parallax depth. We've combined multiple GSAP timelines, each synced to scroll position, to create a seamless storytelling animation experience. If you understand the structure, you can now extend it, customize timings, or even replace clip paths with masks or transforms. And that wraps up our deep dive into the JavaScript scroll logic. And that's how we built a scroll triggered showcase using GSAP, CSS clip path, and semantic HTML all working together to create a cinematic scroll experience. If this tutorial helped you, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really motivates me to make more deep dive videos like this. See you in the next video.